18 days to go before Election Day. More than 20 million ballots have already been cast through early voting. When Trump got out of the hospital and reassumed his duties on the campaign trail, he was trailing pretty badly in the polls. Today, Trump's daughter, Ivanka, is campaigning here in the Buckeye State. The Trump campaign and the Trump family were fanning out across the country, making one last push to catch up. is a fighter, and he'll never stop fighting for you. If something's on his mind as it pertains to policy, you will hear about it at some time. Within, when he says something to me, and even when I push back and, and succeed in getting him to be like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go, I know it's only a matter of a month, two months before it comes out again when I'm not there. He's, he, he's very honest, and he is who he is, and, and I think people love that, actually. Ivanka was constantly lobbying her father to do things that, contrary to kind of what the right wing of his base wanted. She was always kind of pulling her father toward a more moderate position in a way that kind of grated on him after time. Trump started to look for positions that he could just give her. I wanted her to go to the United Nations. She would have been incredible as the ambassador. Effectively, he was looking for some way to give her a position of power and prominence and install her as part of the landscape of American power. She would have been an incredible person for our country. She didn't want that. She wanted to help people get jobs. And I think a lot of people appreciate it. They see it, and they get it, and they appreciate it. I love you! I love you, too! <laughs> We're going to do police first. OK. And then we're going to have the pre-program. We're just going to get one clip. And then I'm going to bring Tony back. People close to the Trump family will tell you. you. Feel very safe in this group. <laughs> that Ivanka has been the favorite for pretty much her entire life. I think part of that is a result of how she handled the divorce. One of the nation's most publicly married couples is heading for a very public divorce. I think in a lot of ways, the divorce was the catalyzing event that shaped Trump's relationship with his various children. My mother and my father were very much this sort of golden New York couple, so, so we felt it. Our parents really, 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 really public divorce and all of these things, and it actually brought us uh, very close. It's not just a marriage that's on the line, it's Donald Trump's reputation as a deal maker in a business he'll find brand new. Ivana is still pressing ahead with her lawsuit to throw out the $25 million postnuptial agreement she signed, but now claims is invalid because Donald was allegedly cheating on her. With a little known actress named Marla Maples. <laughs> The topic is Trump versus Trump. Tongues were wagging about Donald and Ivana Trump. Trump Price the race. war. It was a tabloid feeding frenzy. Are you tired of the Trumps? Reporters followed the kids to school. This was a traumatizing experience, made worse, frankly, by the fact that their father was actually encouraging the story. He saw the divorce as a, an enormous PR possibility. There was reporting later that Trump was secretly working the, the gossip columnists and the tabloids, and even almost relished the coverage that this whole story was getting. I'm obviously very just straightforward, brash. She goes, you know, he might not have been the greatest husband in the world, but he sure as hell was a hell of a president. What? What do you think of that? I think it's uh, possibly true. I don't think Trump gave a moment's thought to how the divorce affected his kids. This was a business and personal decision about his own place in the world, his own pleasure, and his own business. Ivanka seemed determined to ensure that she would remain close to her father. That effort by Ivanka shaped their relationship for the rest of their lives. She was always the favorite. She was always daddy's little girl. Don reacted almost in the polar opposite way. He was angry about the divorce. He was angry about how he was brought up. And it took him a while to get over that. There were people in my life that, you know, known me for, you know, for quite a while, whether it was schools or stuff like that, they didn't know my last name because I was just Don. You know, I didn't sort of need that extra, you know, baggage. Is it sometimes a burden or always a luxury to have Trump as your last name? No, I think it's, there's definitely a burden associated with that times. 
Jr. rebelled against his father over and over again for years, taking on a persona and interests that violated sort of core definitions of Lately. Trumpism. What's ironic is that what made Don Jr. such a valuable asset on the campaign trail is actually what embarrassed Donald Trump about him for most of his life. As a lifetime member of the NRA, as a shooting sports enthusiast, as an outdoorsman, guys, I need you to stay in the game. I need you to be involved. Where does he get the outdoors part from? Well, I think it was really from his uh, grandfather more than anybody else. On his mother's side, he was an outdoorsman and. Czechoslovakia, he was a great outdoorsman. So when you're ready. Good. Okay. All right, thank you. First and foremost, father had COVID. Is he, he feeling well, back to normal? Yeah, he is. His energy is off the charts. He's all over the country right now, and he's working hard. And when you watch Trump's oldest children on cable news. So we know what the White House is committed to doing, and we are delivering time after time you get the feeling that they're still auditioning for their father's approval yeah you the american taxpayer have the privilege of spending four trillion dollars to give health care to illegals now, you to the extent that donald thinks about his children as political successors where is don where's my boy he thinks in terms of the brand which of them is the exemplar uh, the personification of the trump brand Ivanka is the embodiment, at least in her public persona, to have the wealth and success that Donald thinks he represents. From the time she was a little kid, she was modeling with her mother. She was trained to be in the spotlight. She was trained to attract attention. My father sees one color, green. That's all he cares about. He cares about the economy. He seems to have respect for Eric as a businessman. He seems to see him as an important part of the business operation. Joe Biden is basically the Loch Ness Monster of the swamp. Don Jr., like his father, looks for ways to be a rogue, looks for ways to be a renegade. Now we can continue to win for America. All three have a, a tremendous following. They have a base. They have their own base. It's part of my base. Omaha is in the election spotlight once again, this time with a visit from President Trump. I decided to take a day Chris, off and come here and support the world's best president that America has ever had. We've been here for 2 o'clock. I love him. I can't even get a boyfriend because I love him so much and nobody can compare to him. If you're a Trump believer and he came to do a campaign rally either in your town or in the town two hours over, that became an event for you that day. It was exciting. It was like going to a rock concert. Hello, Omaha. In 2016, Nebraska voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who finally put America first. I've been an outsider, it seems to be, all my life. I was from Queens, and I went into Manhattan real estate. Then in politics, it's been sort of the same thing. I've been an outsider. I think that's what people wanted. If I don't always play by the rules of the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and I fought harder for you than any president who's ever held this wonderful, beautiful office. That I can tell you. The way Trump spoke at his rallies was some sort of combination of carnival barker and pep rally. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. Seven days from now, we're going to win Nebraska. And we're going to win four more years in the great White House, that beautiful, beautiful White House. Thank you, Nebraska. Thank you, Iowa. Thank you both. Thank you. Get out and vote. Let's just see. We're looking OK there. 
Is that good for you? What he presents here in the middle of the windows is an image, a brand. The background's okay. There were presidents who were obsessed with their image. There was Nixon who was deeply concerned about his image. There were presidents who had a, a, a good sense of stagecraft, Ronald Reagan, for example. But there was no one else like Donald Trump who had developed this well-honed expertise in presentation of self. Is that all good? And who had merged yeah, I was just wondering. all of his reasons for being president. You can't be doing that while I'm talking, right? This way. All of those had become sublimated to the show, the image. Uh, yeah. Let's go. to election day. The race, of course, is to 270, and it's just getting underway. The hope is things remain peaceful, but there is anxiety. It is almost 7 o'clock in the east, 4 o'clock in the west, and polls are about to close in six states in an election night that may still not be over by the morning or the week, and ending a presidential campaign that is both historic and unprecedented. I found out that Steve Bannon was doing an election night broadcast on a rooftop in Washington, D.C. CNN is projecting that Trump wins Indiana. Early on in the evening, the mood was electric. People were excited. The president's going to come in pretty big in Georgia. I would say 11 points. They're all high-fiving and smirking over at uh, MSNBC and CNN, but you can see they're not smirking now. They felt like it was happening all over again, what had happened in 2016, that Trump was going to defy the experts and win again. We've got a big call to make. Donald Trump will win Florida. As the electoral returns started to trickle in, the mood started to change. The Fox News Decision Desk is calling Arizona for Joe Biden. This is the first time that a state that the Republicans had won in 2016 has flipped to the other side. Of course, the White House is very upset about this, particularly Fox News called it before CNN. We were told that you are not allowed to misrepresent the thing until every yes. vote has yes. been counted. That suddenly shifts the whole feeling of the evening particularly in the White House. They're furious. They're watching the TV and they can't believe it. Fox News, their Fox News has decided that uh, Arizona has gone to the other side. Joe Biden is ticking closer at 218 to 148. And they know that this is a big deal because if Biden has won Arizona, that meant that there was real danger of losing overall. Are you 100% sure of that call and when you made it and why did you make it? Absolutely. The president is not going to be able to take over and win enough votes to eliminate that seven-point lead that the former vice president has. The MAGA bubble was being punctured. People started to get angry. Some strange things going on. And they started to float conspiracy theories. It's all about how they're going to steal the victory from the deplorables. Millions and millions of people voted for us tonight. And uh, a very sad group of people is trying to disenfranchise that group of people. And we won't stand for it. We will not stand for it. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election Frankly, we did win this election. There was no evidence to support that he had actually won the election, but it spoke to his delusions, and it also spoke to his determination to concoct an alternate reality for his supporters. He refused to listen to anybody who had any other point of view, and he refused to learn anything. So if you start from that you're a winner and refuse to listen to anything, then you'll pretty much end up thinking you're a winner, and that's what happened. Of the United States presidential elections remains on a knife edge this morning. President Trump is currently leading in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and in Georgia. We've heard this morning from Philadelphia counting officials. They have got at least 1.2 million ballots still to process. Stop it, stop it, stop it. The legal strategy seems to boil down to stopping the count in places where Donald Trump is ahead, Pennsylvania, continuing to count or counting again in places where he is behind, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona. We're going to win this election? We've actually won it. 
Just a matter of counting the votes fairly. Most of the people here hate America. Yeah, it's the facts. The facts. Don't even call their name, black people. You need to get their name out of your mouth. It was a very tense time. We will not stop until every vote is counted. Anything felt possible. Joe Biden has won Michigan. That puts him now six electoral votes from the presidency of the United States. You too. Arizona overnight, more than 100 protesters stormed the country elections office. We are on the right side of history. CNN breaking news. After four long, tense days, Joe Biden has been elected the 46th president of the United States. <laughs> How about Donald Trump? You're fired. <laughs> the call for Joe Biden isn't, is it? Who was it called by? All the, oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow. The people of this nation have spoken. They've delivered us a clear victory. Tonight, we're seeing all over this nation, all cities and all parts of the country, an outpouring of joy, of hope, renewed faith in tomorrow. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. Trump's losing was something that threatened the image that he had spent his entire life building. He was fighting the possibility that he would be seen as a loser. He was not going to just let it happen. President Trump has gone dark since he lost the election. The Trump team formally challenging the results in Wisconsin, calling for recounts in Michigan. I don't know what you need to wake you up. This election was stolen by a collection of international leftists. Five days of silence from Donald Trump. And anybody who wants this country to remain free needs to step up right now. We are still on the ground in Pennsylvania. We are not going anywhere. This is an unprecedented streak of silence from the president of the United States. Okay. Beautiful. Oh. I don't think you want to have the water in the picture, right? You can take it off. Yeah. Yeah. Put it over there, Nick. Kind of this table as well. Yeah, I might as well take the table. How are you? Doing good. Very good. Thank you. You know what you can do, Nick? Sir. Put the table back because it's missing something. Put the table back and put the water on the table without the thing on top of it. Okay. How's that look? Go ahead, take it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good. Right? Let's go. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리